one of my most memorable moments of my career. It was always a big deal that um, for our, our dilated, for our second album, we were able to go and work at D&D Studios. You know, we went to New York and recorded like half of our album at d and I think we stayed there for almost like, I think we were there for a week to two weeks. And, uh, you know, at one point, you know, we were, we had every room locked down. We had like the beat miners in one room doing a beat for us, the primos in one room doing a beat for us, alchemists is in the other tracking a beat. And it was, it was just amazing, you know, like being a fan and reading all the back of these album covers and being a fan of all these artists who recorded at this legendary grimy studio in New York. And, you know, to finally get up there and to walk in and just see people like Freddie Fox walking around and, you know, MOP, uh, Guru, you know, just meeting Primo alone, you know, was was crazy enough. But, you know, pretty much seeing a bunch of my heroes and, and being uh, treated like peers was 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 something I'll never forget. You know, it was something I never imagined in a million years uh, would have happened. And um, yeah, I love thinking about that. One of the craziest things I've seen on tour was being on tour with uh, Gangstar and uh, Rage Against the Machine. And I think we we're in. Utah. Gangstar would go on after us and before Rage Against the Machine and, and Primo would get on stage and he'd, while he'd set up his gear, he would put on like a, a mask so you couldn't tell who he was, you know, and he wouldn't take off the mask until the show started. But I was on the side of the stage watching this, but, you know, literally seconds before they were about to go on, this cuckoo kid just runs, like, runs past security, up the ramp, on the stage, and socks Primo. And then before you know it, you know, him and Primo are boxing and then the whole Gangstar Foundation comes out and they all just grab this kid up and take him backstage. And I don't know what kind of shit they did to him, but it was come to find out, find out later. The kid was like on some heavy drugs. So I don't even I don't know if he, he felt it later. But at the moment, I don't think he really even understood like what was happening. But you know, I, just, I still remember like like the Gangstar Foundation, like coming out of the back, like like superheroes, like, you know, they, they made him look so small, like three huge, I mean, the, you know, Big Shug and Freddie Fox alone, they're like bodybuilder type motherfuckers. So they were just up there just like, you know, and you fuck with Primo, they they were just like vexed, like little steam coming out dude's ears. Like I thought they were really gonna like literally tear him apart, like the way they dragged him backstage. It was, it was quite an experience. I come my life blessing every day, man. You know, from family, my kids, and all that good stuff. But my professional career, I, I don't. There isn't much that I have been privy to, man. In this short life, man. From even from meeting Mike Prince. And there was an actual bomb threat in the hotel. And this was right when I joined Public Enemy, so I'm shook. They didn't find anything. Talking to Chuck, I was like, Chuck, man, did you hear there's a bomb threat in the hotel? He's like, oh, that's nothing, Lord. You remember Flavor in 87, there was a bomb under the stage. Flavor's like, yeah, boy. So we'll go over to the studio, Broken Complex Studios, and we just smoked out like crazy. And he came by and just, we cut like a couple records and they both went on my Hoppa and Friends project like immediately. We were on the radio in New York City, which is incredibly influential, but at the same time, we were consummate fans. I mean, the reason why we wanted to do this show was based out of us being such fans and wanting to share our love with as many people as possible.